All right, we're gonna go over one of my favorite pieces of equipment, the LTV 1200. It's a good little travel vent. We're gonna do some close up, touch and turn, see what makes this thing tick. All right, so we have our LTV 1200 ready to go. So let's go ahead and set up the circuit first. We turn LTV, you'll see that there's three inlets. That's because we have a very complicated circuit, okay? So here's our circuit. We have our inspiratory and expiratory limb. This is our ghetto test lung, but we have our expiratory limb ending here, and then inspiratory limb is right here, okay, ending in the filter. We also have these three connectors. These are pressure and flow transducers, and these are gonna connect here. And you'll notice that these are color-coded, okay? So we have yellow, white, and we have this clear one. Uh, now, when we connect these, you're gonna do a lot of traveling with this vent. So you wanna make sure that these don't get all twisted. Okay? And the easiest thing to do is when you connect them, instead of just twist them on, is before you twist, or before you get them on, give it a little counterclockwise twist, and just let it turn it on itself. See like that? Just like that, there you go. And just push this in. And so what that does is it makes them lay flat, and so they won't come disconnected as easily because this is one of the most prevalent alarms on the LTV is these will come off and they'll beep 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 and that's usually what it is okay and so now we have this one we're going to connect this with a filter to here okay it's very important to know though when we have our LTV this little connector here this 15 millimeter connector could come off okay and if it comes off we don't have it this vent is inoperable because okay? this will not connect to it okay so we have to make sure we have this 15 millimeter connector. We have extras if we need them to make sure that this vent runs. And that just goes right in there and this goes here. Okay, so let's turn this vent on. Okay, let's fire this thing up, okay? So we have our on button and that's what we're going to do. We're gonna hit the on button, pull it down. I want you to notice up here, we have a menu. Yeah. And so we have a select button and if you toggle the wheel here, we go to new patient, we're gonna hit that. And this will give you choices We have infant, pediatric or adult. And what happens if you select one of these, it'll kind of give you a pre-setting for what uh, typical adult or typical baby. So we're gonna hit adult, and this is gonna give us our, our set title volumes, our set rate, 12,500. And now we have our test lung. Okay. I want you to notice what this is doing. It's collapsing on us because why? We don't have peep dialed in. So let's dial in some peep. Now, when we make adjustments on this thing, you're gonna touch, turn, touch, okay? So you notice, if I'm gonna adjust the peep, I'm gonna touch it, everything grays out, and then I can adjust the peep. We go to peep of five, and I want you to notice what's happening with the lung now. So the lung now is now staying open. So we give that tidal volume, and we're gonna keep it open. We're gonna pop it open, we're gonna keep it open, okay? Uh, we don't want this to happen with our patients. We don't want to get floppy lungs and we don't, we don't want that, okay? So we want to go give them some lungs that stay open, okay? And let's say we turn up the peep higher and go watch the wrinkles come out of those gloves, see that? But let's not get crazy. Let's go back down to five. There we go. And now we can look at our vent settings, okay? Up here, as a, the menu, we'll just toggle through all of them. We have our map and mean airway pressure. We have our peep, it's a peep, it's a reading of the peep. We have our rate, which is F, which is frequency. It's, and we have our tidal volume, XL tidal volume. And we have our minute ventilation, which is basically the, the uh, rate times the tidal volume. And we have our flow. Okay, let's go over all of those. So let's say that we're going to Check a tidal volume. Okay, this is a good way to check if we have a leak. Now, see so we have dialed in 500 and we're returning 431. In this very sophisticated lung, we have some kind of a leak. I can hear it. And it's not enough to trigger the, the alarm, but it's, it's gonna read. And there we go, it's gonna level out right there. Um, let's go to the IDE ratio, okay? This is the inspiratory to expiratory ratio. And to adjust this, we adjust the inspiratory time. And so we're going to, let's do that. Let's go to touch. And you notice we switched to the flow. 
okay? And so let's say that we want to have a longer inspiratory, expiratory time. We want to have more time to exhale. So I'm going to take the inspiratory time and I'm going to shorten it. I'm going to go from one second to half a second. Okay, you notice the flow changes and now our I to E ratio will change too. So we go I to E ratio without flow, we go from one to nine. See that? So let's go back to one. One second, you see the flow change, and then we go to the IE e ratio goes from one to nine to one to 3.3, watch, it'll go do it. Or one to four, whatever. So we got one to four IE e ratio. We have a peak inspiratory pressure. And let's look at this, okay? And let's look at this in relation to tidal volume, okay? I said in another video before that the lung is like a balloon. There's only so much space into it. And the more volume you put in this balloon, the tighter it becomes. And that becomes detrimental at some point when we have really sick patients. Okay. So let's say that we have, notice we have a pip of 21 centimeters of water. So let's go from a tidal volume of 500 to 6, 620. Okay, so we land on 620. And I want you to notice that the peak inspiratory pressure goes from 21 to climbing 23. Okay. See the little bit of peak pressure that comes up? The pressure in the lungs when you go higher. So now let's go down to a small tidal volume, lung, lung protective ventilation. Let's go, let's say we're going to 400, and I want you to notice the peak inspiratory pressure drop, okay? So we have our, our tidal volume of 400. Now our peak inspiratory pressure is 19 centimeters of water, okay? So now, we could switch through these, we could toggle through all of these. Uh, rate, you'll see it represented in most ventilators as an F, which means frequency. And you'll notice that this glove is actually over breathing. We have a, a rate of 12 dialed in, and then it's, for some reason, it's thinking that it's triggering another breath, so it's, it's actually breathing 13, over breathing by one. Okay? Um, so let's go ahead and change some settings on this. Okay, let's say that we wanna go from uh, assist control, which we have dialed in right here. We, ha we see we have a volume and pressure. Okay. Let's say that we want to go to pressure control. We want to do a uh, different kind of ventilation. So we're going to go, first thing we're going to do is we're going to select what kind of control we're going to go from volume. Because volume, we set a tidal volume. Pressure, we're going to actually set a pressure. And when I hit this, you'll see a pressure control uh, pop up here. So we're going to hit this, we're going to hit it once, hit it twice, and it'll stay. Now we have our pressure control setting. Okay? And to monitor what kind of tidal volumes we're gonna get, we'll toggle it to VTE, tidal volume, Excel tidal volume. And this is where we're going to adjust our pressure control. So let's say we're gonna go up, just to get an appropriate tidal volume. We'll watch the tidal volumes increase. Okay, our tidal volume's increased now, 698. Okay, and go, oh, that's a little too big. So let's actually go down, back to 17. Let's say the doctor targets 500 mils, okay? And so we have 17 set. Oh, we're, we're about 515. Maybe we go a little lower. And we're hitting our target, okay? There we go, 432. And then we could check the the peak inspiratory pressure to make sure we're not, we're not hurting the lungs, and it's 20, it's manageable, looks good. Okay, so let's say we wanna to go to SIMV. So SIMV is a mode that's volume control, so we're gonna to switch to volume control, touch, turn, or touch, hold it once, hold it twice, and it stays. And then we're going to take this, and we're gonna switch it to there, so we're gonna hit it once and twice, and it's gonna stay. So now you notice we have our rate, tidal volume, and we also have pressure support that we can dial in, and that's where we're gonna dial our pressure support. And then we have true SIMV, okay? So, let's go to our tidal volume. And so we're riding the vent right now, but if we add some more breaths, you see they're gonna vary because these breaths, 12 of them are gonna be at 400 mils, and then the rest are going to be whatever we do at 10 over five, okay? So there's our SIMV, and let's say, also, this vent's pretty versatile. We could actually use it for BiPAP, so. And I don't recommend it, it's not the best 
BiPAP machine. But in a pinch, uh, let's say that you're limited with equipment or you're on a rig and you're traveling and you want to you want to put someone on BiPAP, this can be used that way. And so how what we're going to do is we're going to go to this NPPV and we're going to switch it to that. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to hit, see how we have this, we're going to hit select, and it's going to hit twice, and then we're going to, we're going to leave it on NPPV. Okay, and then you notice now, the menu is asking us to set the IPAP, the inspiratory uh, positive airway pressure. We set that, that'll adjust this, okay, let's say we set it to 15, and then we'll hit this, and then it'll ask us for the EPAP, which is the P, the uh, expiratory positive airway pressure. We'll set that, and bam, there we go. Okay, and then it'll retitle volumes, but there's, this is BiPAP, so at a certain point it'll say apnea because I'm not really breathing, I'm not breathing, okay, it's a spontaneous mode, at a certain point it's going to go, hey look, you're not breathing, it's going to kick into apnea, see that? So, I'm going to start breathing, hit the silence, and we're going to breathe. Now, it's important to know though about this machine, okay, when you're dialing in, the IPAP, you'll notice it says centimeters water plus PEEP. That means that it adds the PEEP to it. So if let's say that you wanted to set it 10 over five, which is, a, which is kind of a common starting point for BiPAP, okay, you wouldn't need to set it to, okay, oh, I'm not breathing. And the alarm will not, will not cease until you address it, okay? So it's, an, it's one of the most annoying alarms in the business, okay? Um, so let's go to five over five, okay? And this is actually 10 over five. So if you're gonna set 10 over five on this machine, you would go five over five because this is gonna be added to this, okay? And that's just how this LTV is, is designed. And that's what you have to look at this. That'll remind you to set it, okay? So people who are setting it 10 over five, it's actually 15 over five, okay? So good to know. Um, and like I said, I'm not a big fan of using this at, for uh, non-invasive uh, non-invasive ventilation because this is what's going to happen. You're going to have all these alarms. Okay? It's hard. It's not very comfortable. And it's very important to know this. Okay, whenever you use this, let's go. Let's go ahead and set it back to assist control. Um, it's important to know this when you're using this for. BiPAP, you need to have a particular mask, and a mask, it's a non-vented mask, which means a, vent, a mask without holes in, the, in, in it, because your exhalation is going to be on the exhalation limb. It's not going to be in the mask, and if you have a mask with holes in it, or you have some other port that's bleeding out, it's going to create too much of a leak, and it's going to be a noisy trip. And like I said, this is, the, this is probably the most annoying alarm in the business, right? Um, it, it just is. I mean, there's no, it's unrelenting. You hear that? It's just the worst alarm, okay? And we're gonna address it. Silence. There we go. Disconnect. Okay, it'll beep too until you address this and clear it, okay? Um, what else can we show you with this? Uh, we can show you how to put in the inline nab. Okay, and so how we do this, is we're gonna make sure that we put it on the right, on the right limb, with the expiratory limb, and we have the inspiratory limb, okay? And so we're going to find the inspiratory limb and then we're going to take our neb with a T piece and we're going to just tee it in as we say. So we're gonna put it here. Silence. And then we have our gas source and then we'll just pipe that in, okay? So we have our treatment going and we have our ventilator and we have a good you have a good peak going. There we go. Now, uh, ER nurses or you know any nurses that go from intubation to this vent, uh, very important uh, to know. Got to sedate them, okay? Because this vent is unforgiving. It'll as soon as you get a patient who comes out of their paralytic, and we we don't hang sedation long enough, and they're bucking the vent or they're gagging the tube. This is all you'll hear. You'll hear this, and it won't stop. It won't stop. It'll just keep going. Okay, we can hit this alarm over and over again, but 
it'll be an unrelenting beep. Okay? And we could do things like widen out the alarms, but we can max them out and they'll still beep. Okay? So, and what we do is we, do, we call this the sedation alarm. Okay? It just reminds, um, reminds everyone that we need to hang sedation and sedate this patient and make him comfortable. Okay? All right, so there's our LTV 1200. Quiet. There we go. Uh, thank you for watching.